Welcome to this Killick Explains video and welcome to video number three in a four part series. Part one was what is equity analysis, part two what is a PE ratio. Here I want to look at another ratio, a balance sheet focused ratio called the price to book ratio and all in the interests as we said in part one of not overpaying for the companies we like the look of. So we're looking to find good companies, not overpay and then hold them for the long term. That was all in part one. So not overpaying, just a reminder, is about finding value for money. It's about using multiples such as the price to book or the price earnings ratio. It's about making sure that we find companies where those multiples are relatively low if possible and then we hold them for the long term. So what is a price to book ratio? Well, the name is almost as it describes, if you like, it's a measure of value. So it's a measure of cheapness or expensiveness, if you like. And this one, unlike the PE ratio, compares the current price or the market capitalization of the company to the latest book value per share or total book value or total net asset value, if you like. Now, what is that net asset value? While it's basically the latest balance sheet asset number, it's usually done on a historic basis, so it's out of date almost the moment it's done. But essentially it asks a similar question to the price earnings ratio, which is, you know, how long will it take on an asset basis to get my money back? Low is cheap and high is expensive. So if you imagine, if you've got a price of one pound, a book value per share of 10p, then the price to book ratio is 10, all right? Now the question then becomes, how do you know whether that's cheap or expensive? And with all ratios, the answer is benchmarking and a bit of judgment. So let's look at some of the traps now. And some of these traps are the same no matter which ratio you use. So first of all, relying on one number to get a snapshot on should you buy a company, is it cheap or expensive? Can be a bit dangerous. Net asset value can change short term, it can fluctuate, although balance sheets don't move around as much, some would say, as profit and loss accounts and cash flows, it can move. The missing value problem is specific to this particular ratio. In other words, the book may not contain all the value contained within a business. The brand value, for example, the intangible stuff, the stuff you can't kick, not all of that, the brand name being a classic case in point, may be reflected in the book and therefore reflected in the price to book ratio. Accounting choices matter. So the book, as they call it, is dependent. The NAV of a business is dependent on the depreciation policies, the amortization policies and so on that are chosen. So although you can benchmark that, it's important to be aware of it. And frankly, this ratio, which is very much net asset value, valuation focus, suits some sectors better than others. So prime candidates where you might compare businesses using the price to book ratio would include uh, banks. They have quite a big book of financial assets. Property companies. They definitely have quite a big book of assets and potentially investment trust companies, which I cover in another series as part of a funds overview. Uh, there, the price to book ratio can be quite useful, but where asset values are not a driver of business growth, where the business is driven by other metrics, you've got to be quite careful relying too heavily on a price to book ratio. And my final point would be trying to find low price to book ratios when the market is punchy can also be quite tricky. Now to find out more about what is a big topic that I've compressed fairly quickly there, you've got uh, killick.com forward slash learn and there is a, a ratios tab around about there somewhere. You've got my how to invest in equities guide next to me. That will be editor at killick.com. Uh, the other guides are on other topics but you're welcome to ping me to find out what those are all about too. And then to hear about equity analysis in a bit more commercial context, Confidant next to me is our quarterly magazine and that again is editor at killick.com.